Well, hello, everybody. Are you on your um, Facebook page? I'm going to share it to my page. I'm doing it from Kingdom Advancing. It's all right. I'm going to share it. Hello, everybody. Time to come in. I'm going to start a watch party from my page. Do you see it, Andrea, or no? If you go to Kingdom I'm Advance, I'm watch party for my page. What What is it, Kingdom Advance? What? The Kingdom oh. Advance of Ministries. Hi, Internet. Oh, okay, I got it. I was like, I know how. I, uh... <laughs> I know, right? Hello, everyone. Come on in. We are, um, Andre and I are um, starting some watch parties from our page. And um, I want to say good morning, first and foremost. Well, hello. It's probably close to the afternoon. But hello. Come on in. Uh, we're going to share this. We're going to be discussing a topic um, called After the Child. There's a couple things I want to go ahead and um, while people are tuning in or coming in, I want to um, kind of address. Uh, first off, I just want to um, thank Andrea for um, her boldness um, to come on and share her story. Um, but before we get into that, I really, the Lord has impressed upon my heart. Um, at the beginning of this year, I, along with some other women, we prayed for the nation. We prayed for the men in our lives. Yeah. And um, this is not by happenstance that we're even doing this today, Andrea, with everything going on in our nation. Um, and um, I just want to, re I repent it and we repent it privately in a prayer group, but I just want to publicly repent on behalf of our nation in the area of racism. Uh, God is going to do some things and um, they have to play out. I did share this in a, a private group, but some things are going to play out. But I publicly just want to repent on behalf of our nation, um, on behalf of you know the church in regards to racism, anything that we're not doing or have not addressed concerning this area um, because it is important to God. Um, and there's been a lot of um, bloodshed, not just from one side, but there's been a lot of bloodshed within um, the, the, in the earth. Um, and so I just want to publicly repent on behalf of our nation and the nations, um, and especially in this area of racism, okay? And I wanted to, um, God bless you, everyone coming in. Um, and Andrea, like, uh, let me, I want to read this poem. It's by Langston mm -hmm. Hughes called yeah. Mother and Son. Do you mm -hmm. know this? And I, I, uh, I used to say it, <laughs> but I, I don't remember wow. it completely now, but yeah. It's called Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. And it says, well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stare. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time I's been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you set down on the steps cause you finds it kind of hard. Don't you fall now. For I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Um, I think it's befitting. Um, I really I love that poem because it speaks um, to mothers. It speaks to 
um, what mothers, what we do for our children. And so um, I just thought it'd be befitting during this time and the season um, and the, of what is going on in our nation. And so I just wanted to share that. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, hi, Michael, God bless you, brother. Um, I just want to talk and, you know, Andrea, as I thought about your story, uh, we, we talked a little bit mm -hmm. privately and, um, you know, I know your story is one because you have been raised in the church. I remember you as a young woman, a young, a little girl, actually mm -hmm. um, in the <laughs> church, little girl. And, um, um, you know, sh but your story is very different. And, um, you know, the I'm, I'm going to touch on something in a second. But the more I thought about your story, even as we were coming up on doing this today, I said, God, you know what? It's something to me because you you share something with me. I'm not we're going to not we're going to go into it a little bit. But you said, you know, you were always mindful of how or wanting to share your story because you kind of bashed within the church. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, God, it's amazing to me that now all the church doors are closed. <laughs> and I said, now people can actually heal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not talking. I'm I've been in the church for over 20 something years. I love God. I love his people. I love the kingdom of God. I love the house of the Lord. What I'm saying is, is sometimes that there's more damage within the church. And I know God's writing this, but I just wanted to speak to that. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, now people can actually heal. Right. And um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to share that because your story is so important for people to hear. And you know, you have an African American son. We could say black. I'm not afraid to say black, but mm -hmm. you know, I like African American too. I'm okay with that because you know what? I'm comfortable. I know who I am. <laughs> Um, I do, I do. Um, but I really want you to just kind of share you, introduce yourself. I know you're a psalmist for the Lord, um, first and foremost, but you're a beautiful young lady. And I just want you to kind of talk and, and, you know, share your heart on today. Um, well, yeah, like, uh, Tanya said, I, I did grow up in the church. I've known nothing really but church until like middle school when my mom took me out of Christian school and put me in a public school because she said the drama was too much and she needed to put me in a performing arts school because <laughs> I was just extra all the time. And, um, but I, I, I definitely grew up in the church and um, I joke around with my friends all the time because as a musician, it is good to know like all different genres of music as an artist. And growing up, I didn't get to listen to like Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder and, you know, all the greats that people are like fans of, like Prince and Shaka Khan and all of that. My mom was like, we listening to BB and CC Winans and the Winans Brothers. We listening to John P. Key and Hezekiah Walker. Like that, that was my foundation in music. Um, so we, you know, we joke about that. So that just attests to the fact that yes, I did grow up in church and yes, I did grow up in a Christian household. It wasn't a perfect household, but it was a Christian household. And, um, Yep, at the age of 14, I got pregnant and uh, hid it from my mama, tried so hard until she found out about it and she um, approached me about it. Um, I wanna say I was probably about four months pregnant and um, she approached me about it and I was, I was devastated. I couldn't even speak, it seemed like, so long before the words could come out of my mouth. Um, to you know, at least tell her like, yeah, you're right, you're tr it's true. I am um, pregnant and uh, I had my son at 15. Mm -hmm. um, the, the church was really harsh about it. <laughs> and it's understandable. Like you, you, never want to, um, you never want to praise sin. You know That's what right. I mean? So I understand, I you, you know, that again. side of it. Say it yeah. again. <laughs> You never want to praise sin. So I understand, you know, where the church was coming from. That's right. But 
Christ is love. You know what I mean? We all make mistakes, whether you make the mistakes in the closet or whether you, you know, are caught red handed. Um, Say it again. Because <laughs> you ministering. I'm telling you what I know. Yeah. You yeah. are ministering, whether you the, caught in the closet. Yeah. Or you caught red handed. Like um, a lot of people can mask their sin. They could come in mm -hmm. and look, you know, holy, but go home and it's a totally different story. And when a when a teenage girl or a woman gets pregnant out of wedlock, it is seen, you can't hide that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, because your body is gonna change, it's gonna do different things. So um, the church found out about it. Um, of course I had to get off the choir and all those things or whatever. But um, the only thing, the, the one thing that I do truly remember is a lot of um, parents, Stop their daughters from hanging out with me. Mm. Like they didn't want them to be around me. Like they were going to catch some disease or something. And wow. um, my best of best of best friends, like the person, like I, we were on three to 12 choir together. Like we were like ace. That was my ace. And her parents basically told her that she could no longer like hang out with me and be my friend. And mm. that hurt so bad. But and the this Lord, time you, I'm sorry, Andre, I just kind of want to, mm -hmm. um, you know, by this time you're already pregnant. So it's not like you're still in something. You're right. not, you, you, it's not like you're, you're still in, you know, and I, and I love what you're saying because one thing I love about you and Shalay, you guys are speaking from a place of holiness mm -hmm. and, and not you know, um, promiscuity. And I love that. Um, but one, you know, what you said, it's like, I can't, you know, I can't imagine, um, how you must've felt. I mean, let me talk about this for a second, because one, as 14 year old at a fourth at 14. And then I know in some cultures, you know, a 14 year woman, you know, I do. But a lot of things developmentally, I'm just going to speak from a teacher side. You're still learning mm -hmm. and you're still figuring life out. <laughs> I mean, honestly, because, you know, teenagers, you know, they that's a, that's the time. And parents, let me just speak to you really quickly, because this is the time where a lot of parents kind of let their hands off the wheel mm -hmm. when they're 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Because even with my son, when he was in high school, you know, he was in ninth grade. And I remember talking to his guidance counselor and she said, thank you. And please don't take your hand off the wheel. She said, because this is where a lot of parents think, oh, they got it from here. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't. And it the words from the guidance counselor really stuck with me. Like, don't take your hands off. Because mm -hmm. this is the time a lot of them, they, they start getting into a lot of things they, they don't they don't mean to. They need, that's why we're called parents for a reason. Right. And so they need our guidance. You know, they're trying to figure out life. Yes, they're starting to think on their own, but they need guidance on wisdom on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate your mom. I want to just, you know, honor your mom <laughs> today for um, you had to have, yo, she had to have skin like you got to have some tough skin. You what? know what I mean? Yeah, that's, right. what I <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I really was thinking that like it's just got to be like everything rolling off of you because at this point, like, you know. It, that's something. So I'm glad you said that because you were still trying to figure out. And like, I, let me go back. It's not like they could catch something from you. You know, your story almost makes me think about the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. You know, because at this point, nobody wants to be around her. You know, but she's just trying to get healed. <laughs> so, yeah. That is, that is true. My mom... Um... I, I don't I don't think I would have survived any of it without my mother. Um, and that's the one like my my mother <laughs> my mom was like my rock. Mm -hmm. Like she understood that I made a mistake. 
but she continued to love me despite what everybody was trying to tell her to do. Oh, you need to let her drop out of school. You need to put her on welfare. And my mother was like, no, she's going to graduate from high school. She's going to go to college and whatever I need to do to make sure that that happens, that's what's going to happen. Like my daughter is not going to be subject to, you know, this world. She's going to grow up. She's going to, you know, be a great mom. I'm going to help her all the way through. So I, I thank God every day for my mother because he could have, giving me a different mother, but he chose to give me this one and I love her for it. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. And, um, and it was my friends from the world that, that, um, that were still my friends. Like, wow. Yeah. You know, I, I just, um, I know we're in a different time now. Mm. This was a while ago. Yeah. How old is your son now? 23. Praise God. <laughs> um, so we're in a we're in a different time, but what I what I think really is speaking a lot to what you're saying is you said my friends. I want to I don't want to cry, but I'm a little emotional about it because you said my friends in the world, and we're still friends um, today. Did it, and I'm not. What I'm but I'm I'm trying to shed some light here on something that's been. That has damaged the church. Mm -hmm. You said my friends in the world still were with me. And what do we say to somebody else who may be going through this? You know what I'm saying? Even if not at 14, at, at 22. Right. What do we say when you say the friends? And I see this is um Church, this is an issue because this is what happens with a lot of different issues. And that's why a lot of them, and I'm not saying you, Andrea, but that's why a lot of people go back into the world and they run away from the church. Yeah, we missed the part that I love. That's the part that people miss. Like Christ is love. And then in my devotion today, it just talked about like, you know, the scripture, um, I think it's in first Corinthians where it talks about um, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't boast. It doesn't envy and all of that. And in my devotion today, it said, you know, to put God in that place. God is kind. God is, you know, but God is love. And at the, in the church, that's where we should be expressing the love of Christ. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, the love can be a little harsh sometimes. Like you can, you can right. still be reprimanded and still right. love. Like that's what parents Come do. On. You know Come what I mean? Now. They they God. punish you, but they still love you. You know what I mean? They there's a consequence, but then there's still love. And that's something that the church misses. It's like you don't have to shun me. You don't have to condemn me. You can still love me. You know what I mean? And then that love is what's going to help me de get deliverance. You That's know, good. and a lot of people um, in the church, they'll, they're like, oh, if I, you know, if I push them to the side or whatever and make them feel like they need to learn a lesson and all of that, then they'll understand the error of their ways. No, if you love them, despite like Christ loves us, despite then that helps them with their deliverance. It helps them process. It helps them with grieving. It helps them with anything that you're going through, because then they feel, oh, you know, if they're showing the love of Christ, then I know Christ is love. Like I know that you know this is <laughs> this is who God is. And I think that's when the the conviction actually comes in, as opposed to the condemnation, right? Because conviction is still, you know, this is some stuff we don't like to touch. No, you know, the church got a little watered down in this. You know, not not the part that you're talking to, mm -hmm. but in the conviction piece. Mm -hmm. the, the church has gotten a little watered down with this and you know uh, a false balance is an abomination to the lord so we gotta have a balance with this right. where we're not like you said we're not watering down the word to where oh everybody's going to heaven no <laughs> you know that's <laughs> not what we're talking to okay right. i got my shirt on y'all y'all know me miss me devil all day that's not the part I'm talking to, but like you're saying, 
you're not the sin part. We're not. We're but it's the the conviction as opposed to the condemnation. Right. And that's what you were feeling was a condemnation Mm -hmm. as opposed to the love of God that brings conviction and brings change. Right. 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 Um, I am. So what would you say? um, Can you talk from maybe the 14 year old perspective or a young adult in this situation? Um, that's pregnant because one, they didn't get there by themselves. You know, yeah. you, yeah. you didn't get pregnant by yourself. Right. <laughs> okay. It wasn't immaculate conception. No, no. no. So, you know, that's one piece we got to really deal with and can be disheartening. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's just, what do you say to, I want to, I want, I would like for you to speak to t- a couple things. From the 14 year old perspective or the young adult, young person perspective mm-hmm. that may be in the situation, because there are a lot of people that aren't even in the church that are in this situation right now. Yeah. What could you say to them? And then I want you to speak to the mother piece. Um, like you said, being 15, speak to the mother piece of it. Um, I would say to a 14 year old girl, um, who has found herself in this position, um, I would tell her to make sure that she loves herself, um, and pray daily. Um, don't feel like God has, um, denounced you. You know what I mean? Um, to love yourself, to get your education, That's to right. um, push against the statistic um, that most African American women, I can That's see, right, them, Andrea. Um, That's right. are you know, there's a statistic that say, oh, when they get pregnant out of well, like they're gonna be in, on welfare, they're not gonna get their education. No, prove the system wrong. Amen. Um, Amen. And um, from the mother perspective. Um, I, I guess you mean like what would what how to be a mother at that age or uh, yeah, just as a mom, what could you say to the young mom that's about to have the child or has had mm-hmm. the child is is kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, um, I would say love them unconditionally. Um, listen to the village around you I'm that's not. trying to help you raise your child. Um, take responsibility for your actions. Don't try to push your child off on somebody else so that you can live your life. Um, Live your life with your child. Let them see you grow up. Let them see you go to college. Let them see you get a college degree. You know, let them see you um, go to work and work and bring home money so that, you know, you can um, be a stable household. Do those things for your child so that they, you know, won't continue to make the mistakes that you've made. Pray for your child all right. the time. Don't stop praying. <laughs> Even when they get to adulthood, when they feel That's like they right. don't need you no more, keep praying for your child because there's a purpose and a plan um, in everything. And um, God's plan needs to come into fruition. So um, continue to pray, pray, pray all day, all day and pray for yourself, you know, so. And that's good. And what I would say, I'm in, um, I'm an educator, early childhood education. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to um, not just young mothers, but young mothers, mothers in general, um, you know, is learn about your child's development. Right. Um, Learn where there's there's, um, resources out here through the state of Maryland or wherever you may be listening from. Um, there, there are resources in early childhood education. Um, I think there's one I used to use called Baby Center or something, babycenter.com, but it helps you to understand the stages of development for your child. Right. And what that will do is help you to understand what phase they're in. Because, okay, granted, even if you're 40, you know, you, you don't know everything about parenting. Right. And this is just a guide. So developmentally, you'll be able to see where your child is so you know can know how to relate 
to your child mm -hmm. and, and to how to handle situate some at least some situation because mixed with prayer you know you'll be able to handle some situations with your child mm -hmm. and so i think that's a big piece and like um andrea said because you know you, there's no statistic that we don't have we're not one we're not we're in this world but we're not of this world Right. And so we're not to be a statistic. Right. Or, you know, systemic racism will say one thing. But mm -hmm. what we're talking to is that we're not, we're going to do this God's way. Right. We want you to do it God's way. You mm -hmm. know, and like you said, there are gifts and talents that need to come out within your child. Right. And, yeah. And you need to nurture them. Mm -hmm. You need to nurture them. Yeah. You need to nurture them. Um, I think this is a good. So what about. And so let me because Shalay brought up something and you're a psalmist, too. And I follow you. I follow, especially when you do your singing stuff. I, 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 always, I pop in and okay. say something happy belated. Well, you had a birthday mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. And you celebrated your birthday by by singing in the church. And yeah. give yourself a party, and you said something in a post. I want to say you stop playing or you stop playing with God. I can't remember how you said it. Do you remember the, mm. what I'm talking about? Uh, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> you but, mentioned something about just God getting not playing, but God just you really got serious in your relationship with God or something. Mm -hmm. you said. Can you yeah. talk about that, especially as a psalmist in the church? Um, yeah, it was it was probably within the last three years where um, God was like, hey, I'm shifting you. Um, so it's you're not just singing anymore. You are um, a worship le leader, a Levite. And I need you to start making some changes in your life. Um, I need you to start living holy. I need you to listen to me more. Um, so that you are able to lead the people um, into the holies of holies. And um, it was, I'm not even gonna lie, it was a struggle because it's like you, having to put down things. Um, I, I, it was a season where I was all by myself and I was like, but Lord, I like people and I don't have no people. I'm by myself, I had no friends. And people would say, I am your friend, but I'm like, but you're not there. And um, in that moment, God was like, you need to embrace me and you need to embrace yourself in me. Um, and when I began to do that, that's when God gave me friends that didn't, I don't have to compromise my faith around. Um, and we've, we've been friends for probably like a, a, a little over a year now. Um, and just my relationship with God has changed immensely. Like my hunger for more of who he is has increased. Like I just really want to wake up every morning, open my word, pray, and I really want to get in tune with what God um, wants me to know about him. You know, not necessarily knowing about myself because I know I'll learn more about myself when I learn more about Christ mm -hmm. because that's who lives on the inside of me and that's whose light should be shining forth through me. Um, but yeah, my, my hunger for Christ, like the scripture says, the deer that panted for the water, so shall my soul. Like my soul is longing for more and more time with God. So it's longing to be in his presence. It's longing to, you know, be in his, um, in his comfort, in his arms. And what, um, what really convinced me to do the worship set for my birthday was I just wanted to really thank God and show God my gratitude for allowing me to see another day, despite all of the things that I've done that were just against his will for my life. And as much as I tried to push and push and push, you know, as he was calling me to do the things that I'm doing now, I just wanted them to know that he could trust me. I wanted them to know that, you know, he could, um, that I loved him and that this life that I'm living is for him. Um, Granted, I perform in different plays and, and things like that, too. But um, you can ask the people that I've been performing around and performing with. They they all know that I'm a Christian and, um, you know, that's what I stand for. 
But yeah, that that was yeah. And I I, I completely enjoyed myself that day. <laughs> I completely enjoyed myself. It was me and the people, you know, that I love around me singing with me. My bishop was there playing the guitar. Mm, I saw that. I mean? And it was just a, an opportunity to be around those people and that love God just as much as I do. Um, and the atmosphere just proved it too. So that's amazing. Um, I want to now want to shift to your son. Um, what oh, yeah. has he? Is he around? Yeah, he right. Oh, he hey, bud. Sorry, to say hello. Hey, how are you? I see your hand. Um, you by you and you you having that support system and by you covering your son. He's graduated high school. Can you just talk? I mean, you don't have to share everything, but he's doing well, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm he's. Yeah, he is. Um, he he's graduated high school. Like that was not an option. Like you you go. I want my degree. His mm -hmm. his high school diploma was mine. Because <laughs> I, I know was that. Like, look, if you look, hey, I worked hard for that degree. <laughs> but he did. He graduated he high school. Say again. I said you both did. You right. both did. Yeah. Right. And um, he graduated high school. He's now working two jobs. Um, he's you know into fashion, into producing music. Um, he still loves the Lord. He goes to church with me, things like that. Um, and and then my support system didn't leave. Like he got, he's grown now, but they're still there. So if I have an issue, if I have a problem, or if it's something that I just can't deal with on my own. I call my mom. I call my dad. I'm like, look, you you need to go talk to your grandson, and y'all right. need to have a conversation because I don't know what's going on. And I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Um, but I am praying. You know what I mean. So they'll they'll step in and they'll have those conversations. You know, with him, especially my dad, with him being a grown man, like both of my dads actually, with him being mm -hmm. a grown man, they have no problem. You know, sitting down with him and talking to him about grown man stuff. You know, That's my good. brothers are the same way. They they don't have a problem talking to him about grown grown man stuff. His dad is a part of his life, um, and Amen. they talk about grown man stuff. You know, <laughs> so he and has a village of men. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think, I mean, what you speak, you speak it to so many uh, aspects of this. But I love it because now it's like the grown. You know, because a, a woman can't teach a man how to right. be a man. Period. <laughs> okay. We can't. My husband has talks with our boys that I will never, you know, be a part of. And I'm okay with that because again, I don't know what it is to be a man, but I'm mm -hmm. grateful that your son and that you had a village and that you all had this and it's, it's showing people that you, we can do more together and your son, you know, one, your mother covered you and the way that your mom covered you, even within the church. I mean, I just had. <laughs> yeah. I mean, standing, ovation. <laughs> stand, standing because that story could have went a whole nother way. Right. A whole nother way. And to see your son, Aaron just doing things. I mean, even his name is biblical, you know, so it's, right. it's an awesome thing. And that's what I just wanted to kind of talk to because sometimes, you know, as, as women, you know, you feel mothers, um, you know, you can feel uh, the pressures more or because mm -hmm. you don't have a support system. Right. It's like, you know, and like you said, you're looked at like, oh, shunned, you know, but in actuality, you did not, you could have not had the child. Mm -hmm. You could have not had the child, but you made a choice to have the child. Right. And I think that, you know, we have to look at this. I mean, it's a lot going on in our nation right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, a, your mom made sure you, you weren't a statistic in, 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 in that sense. Mm -hmm. nor is your son one you right. understand and mm -hmm. so we have to but that was because your your mom they were in she she had a foundation because i was gonna say she was in the church but that don't mean mm -hmm. nothing because the people that's in the church is not really in the church right so let's we got to touch all aspects of that like straight up 
Because everybody that go ain't, you know, they not doing the work for mm-hmm. the work. They're not trying to work out their soul salvation. Amen. That's true. <laughs> people not trying to do that. They just come in a warm a pew for real. For real. Right. That's but true. your mom, yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> I mean, we can try to sugarcoat it, but miss me, devil, because no, it's people that don't really want to be there, but they're there. Mm-hmm. And you know, but your mom gave you something. And she, I mean, I know your mom has, I mean, you've been on Broadway, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Dad, it's yes. not really, but <laughs> <laughs> close enough. <laughs> yeah, I've done some things. So you're going and so I'm 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 just excited. I was trying to see if uh uh Pastor Michelle and I love her. God bless you. Um Pastor Michelle, Ma Janice, and uh Sherelle, Prophet Sherelle. Oh, um, God just told me to tell you guys that he owes you some things. I know you may not mm. be on here. I try to tag you, but God owes you some things. And so um the Lord asked me to share something for some mothers. And he said, for those moms where it has been hard or you've been struggling and you raised the child by yourself, the Lord says, I shall repay because you didn't kill the seed that I planted in you. Amen. I shall repay, saith the Lord. Amen. And so um, you know, when you, you know, because again, you didn't kill the seed. Um, and, um, you know, there's some things. And I actually, you know, before we came on me, you pr- I prayed that with you. But yeah. God, you know, he will repay. Yeah. And he will restore any in raising your child. And so I just um, really, Andre, I'm grateful for you sharing um, this because I know it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. And, um, you know, I we talked privately and I know that the enemy wanted to close your mouth. Amen. And he didn't want you to share this story because there yeah. are many that you're going to help heal in this area and help work through this area because we have to do something different. Yeah. And you know, and and we can't stay, well, we can't stay within the four walls of the church. Right. And the community. Right. You know, we have to go out into the community. He just charged us to go out into all of the world to mm-hmm. preach the gospel. And so that was his, the last commission is to go out. And so um what I am grateful for is even this platform excuse me, that you can use your voice and let people know that there is hope and that there's some things that they can do. Yeah. And so you told them, don't, what would it, th- you said, get your education. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love mm-hmm. God, love yourself. Um, get your education. Um, um, push to just be a better person. That's right. For yourself, for your child. Um, and to the village that is around you, do not give up on her. Do not give up on her child. Um, continue because there is a, it takes a village to raise a child, you know. Um, but yeah, it's true. You need um, you need a support system. And so I know that we've um, helped someone today. Um, if you have. Um, Again, we spoke to, uh, Andrea spoke to a lot of different things, but I would like for you, cause you know, I don't know if you're ready to uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, minister in song, but I would like for you to just minister something um, because again, this is a, we're in a very, uh, you know, I've been lamenting for about two weeks, um, you know, praying that there's no civil war. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally. Um, because that's what the enemy will want another civil war. And, um, yeah, I'm speaking to expressly to that spirit because it, it, it wants to incite and enrage. And when you get to the point of hatred, then no one is greater when you're hating. And so, um, hate, (laughs) we cannot hate. (laughs) All right. Um, um, we have to do things differently. And one way we can do that is through these platforms 
and using our voice right. to provoke change and express change. And so right. I just would like for you to minister something in song. Um, whatever you have, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, even in the times that we have right now in our nation, um, we we can you know protest, we can fight for the cause, but daily we need more and more of God so that God can lead and guide us. Um, and He hears our cry, <laughs> that, that, and He doesn't you know turn a death 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 ear to us at all. So um, this song was on my heart all morning, and it says. Um, Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope it's not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. Oh Lord, give me you, give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Oh Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. So give me you, give me you, oh, give me you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Trust, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all, all of your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. Oh, trust, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all, all of your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. And that was for a mother. Like, just continue to trust in the Lord. You're not going to understand it all. You're not going to understand it all. But God knows all. He hears all. He sees all. The steps of a good man are ordered by him. And you must only trust in him. Trust in his word. Do not doubt him. And he will increase you. He'll increase your knowledge as a mother. He'll increase your knowledge as a, a human being in this world. And um, he'll increase um, his love and his relationship with you. It'll increase if you just trust in him. Amen. Amen. I just see that Wanda uh, popped on. Hey. Uh, um, Wanda Briscoe. And Wanda... Um, I was hoping to see you, but I try to do both and don't go too well. So I'm glad you came on here where I can literally see you. And we just want to honor you today. We want to yeah. honor your son. Um, we know he's gone on to be with the Lord, but we just wanted to um, honor you on today. Um, I know you have another son, but we wanted to honor yeah. your son. We appreciate. I just I feel the presence of God so heavy. Thank you, <laughs> I really, really do. Um, and I am grateful for you sharing your testimony because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb yes. and the power of our testimony. Amen. And so um I am grateful 
for you. Um, not just oh, being for you. <laughs> <laughs> not just being a mother, but being a psalmist unto the Lord, a Levitical, I mean a, a, a voice. Um, there is a difference, and I'm grateful that you none of your gifts fell to the ground. You know, I do see you on Broadway. I know you said, no, nah, not really, but I, I really do see you on Broadway. Um, and so I just know that God is doing something in your life that's even bigger because you sacrificed a lot. Amen. <laughs> you sacrificed a lot. Um, you sacrificed a lot. And some things, you know, um, I just can't share everything aloud. But God is showing me something. You sacrificed a whole, whole lot. Yep, a lot. And I, I feel that this is the season in my life because I've done that. And that because I've proven, you know, myself to God that he is the Lord of my life, that there are major blessings coming my way. So. And, I, you know, I used to be like, oh, wow, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Why can't I go here? Why can't I go there? Like, why is in my career this and why is in my career that? But God has been telling me within the last year, he's just been like, the time is now. So you just got to trust me and follow me. And the time, the time to do it is now. So he's preserved you for such a time as this. Amen. <laughs> That's what he said to Esther. It was for such a time as this. And right. so I am grateful for you. I know you've ministered to some moms um, on today, um, really ministered um, because there's some moms in hard places right now. Amen. And I literally Amen. see you, um, some mothers in hard, I mean, very hard places where you're yeah. trying Amen. to make a decision whether you're going to eat or your child is going to eat. And um, as a prophet of God, I'm going to speak to that because Elijah, when he went to the widow woman, he went to her and he said, make me a cake first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her vats, you know, burst open. And uh -huh. so today I, I prophesy that your vats, my God, will burst you, open. Yes, Lord. You, your, they will burst open where there's been any drought, where you can't seem to make a decision. Some of you are literally teetering, my God. You are teetering. Mm, you, and you are saying, I think I'm going to go with the sugar daddy. Ooh, do and God is saying, do not, do not. Don't take the bait. God will make a way yes, he will. where there seems to be no way. Yes, he will. Don't take the bait. Right. Don't Thank take the Jesus. bait that Satan is putting before you. Do not take that bait. I tell you and I beseech you right now by the spirit of God, do not take you, the bait. Mm. It is not what it seems like, says the Lord. Thank you. Don't Jesus. take the bait. Mm. Don't do it, sis. Don't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you, compromise. Jesus. Don't compromise who you are. Yes. Mm. You are a daughter of the king. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You're not a two for five meal. Mm. Mm. Good God from Zion. You're not a two for five meal. Thank you, Jesus. Don't take the bait. Thank Stand you, your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground on today. As a woman of God, your price is far above rubies. Yes. Yeah. Your price is far above rubies. Um, Andrea, I thank you. I thank God for your story on today. Because I tell you, so many people have been set free. And I pray that God opens door after door after door for you. 
I pray that God opens door after door after yes, door God. for your son. You, I pray that he minister to young men In like never Jesus. before, especially during this time. We need prophetic voices. We yes, need God. men of God to stand up and take their rightful place. Thank and so you, I'm Jesus. grateful to the Lord on today for your son Amen. being one of those prophetic voices for his generation. His name is not Aaron for no reason. For no reason. You got that right. And so, uh, yeah, his name is not Aaron for no reason. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so um, I pray that you all have been blessed. Um, Andre, thank you. Thank you, Tanya, for being the open door for me to do this. I appreciate you a lot. Um, I don't I don't get asked to do much, but <laughs> I felt the Lord leading me to do this. And I'm I'm grateful that he led me to do this with you, um, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had you on my radar for quite some time <laughs> because your story needed to be told. And the half of it has yet to be told, sis. Amen. The half is yet to be told. Amen. Because you obey God. Um, the half is yet to be told because we're coming out of this um, on an, uh, and, and on another end. We're coming out of this. Um, you know, it's more than one pandemic going on right now, mm -hmm. but we're coming out of this and we're going to come out better and we're going to come out stronger. And Amen. God's going to use your voice even the more, Andre, just to set the captives free. And so I'm honored to know you. Um, if you ever need me for something, let me know. <laughs> OK, um, um, but I'm, I'm grateful for you on today, um, sharing your heart, sharing your story and coming out for such a time as this. Amen. All right. So God bless you all. Enjoy your Saturday. Please, please be safe. Um, you know, don't wear those masks when you're out and you're away from people. It's, it's going to mess with your system. This is just something I've been sharing prophetically, please don't do that because, you know, it's going to really hinder your breathing. Mm -hmm. um, build your immune systems up now Amen. or later. I'm yeah. telling yeah. you by the spirit of God, I've shared this, um, but please build your immune systems up now for later. Okay. Um, there's some things you can do. So glory to God. Um, thank you all. You have an amazing Saturday and I love you, Andrea. God bless love you. Love you too. Love all you. right. Bye everybody. Bye.